Well, again, we'll say that's added up to over 200 New York Emmy nominations. So yes, it's obviously it's over 300 now. I, you know, you I must have gotten the old like bio. So I, you know, <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> gotta beat up the guys who uh, who update the website. I'm usually one of those guys. Uh, you have a website. Uh, oh, yeah. social media. Yeah, help out with some oh, of these, these guys the here. Um, unofficial two-minute warning for everybody. It's the last question I'm going to put out to each of these two gentlemen, and then we're opening the floor to you folks. So it's going to be a great opportunity for you. Uh, if you haven't come up with something just yet, give it a little thought. And these gentlemen are going to be nice enough to stay here and answer some of your questions. The last one I had, and I'm going to address this to both of you, and I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, speak to Mr. Flatty in a managerial capacity with the Rockland Boulders as well. Uh, we've talked a lot uh, over past years about women in sports and how that field has changed. How have you each seen it change? There are a lot of females in this major program, in the communications major program, and uh, what advice would you give to them as they start to get involved more in the ranks? I mean, know what you're talking about. We just put Sarah Kustak two weeks ago, who's our net sideline reporter. We had, everybody was working some sort of tournament. It was tournament weekend. And other than I and Eagle, who was working on Sunday, who could work the Saturday night game, we had no analysts. I and Eagle does play by play for the Nets. Mm -hmm. We had no analysts. So we sat there, and you know, the Nets weren't playing particularly well. And our, our lead base basketball producer, who's great, his name is Frank DeGrace, you know, said to me, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know, we got to come up with an analyst. So we started kicking around stuff, and one of us said to the other, I think he said it to me. So Frank deserves the credit for this. You know, he said to me, did you ever consider Sarah? And I said, you know what? That's a great idea. Sarah had done college basketball for Fox Sports 1, and she was really good. She was a college basketball player. She played at the ball. She's a really good collegiate <coughs> basketball player. She knows the game. She knows the sport. So she knew it as a player. She's, brought, she's done it as a sideline reporter, and she had worked a couple of games for Fox Sports 1 as an analyst. So I had seen that, and when Frank brought that up, I said, you know what? This is, you're right. This is an absolute no-brainer. And she went in, and you would think she had done this for a thousand games. She was smooth. She was knew her stuff. She was on point. She wasn't nervous. She wasn't afraid to be critical when necessary and supportive and, and constructive when needed. She, she gave a very balanced presentation. She was just cool as can be. And she did a great job. It's as good as, you know, let's put sex and gender aside for whatever minute. She, I don't know a guy that could have done that. We got really great analysts, men. You know, she was as good as any man we've ever had to. Her. So it's not about sex or gender to me. It's about the ability to do the job. I mean, has there been a glass ceiling in this business? Yeah, there's been a glass ceiling in a lot of businesses. And, and television was, sports was certainly one of them. It's a male bastion who watches television, who watches sports on television. Mostly men, mostly a, a male demographic. It's not to say there aren't women who aren't passionate sports fans. Of course there are. But there weren't as many as there were not, not close to the number of men. Therefore, you've always had sort of men driving this, you know, being up there and giving their opinions and being the analysts in the play-by-play. -play. As time has gone on, I've seen it change. It's been incremental. It's been slow, but it's gotten to the point where, you know, listen. If you get the right, if you get the right woman, who has you get. You just can't throw. The point, the problem that was, they just put people up there to put people up there to say they had a woman in a telecast. It's like, no. If you're going to do that, have the right woman in a telecast. If you're concerned about minority hiring and you should be diverse because our audiences are diverse, we need to be diverse, then for God's sake, get the right person to do this. Don't worry about it. Diversity is important. I'm the first one to tell you it is. And we've been pretty diverse. It's because the audience, again, is diverse. Having made that point, make sure you have the right person to do it. You have options. Hire the right person. If a person is, I don't care what you are, your skin orientation, your color, your creed, your background, your gender, it does not matter. What matter is that you you know the subject matter. Know your subject matter. Just don't expect somebody's gonna give you a job because you're white, green, yellow, black, blue, whatever. It doesn't, you know, you could do that. And you'll have a very good, interesting, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, Picasso painting, I suppose, or who made you, who was the, the, the artist with the colors, who loved colors? Monet. I can't know anything about art. I know I much about, about art. Neiman, you know. It's, it's <laughs> yes, because I know about soccer. I know much about artists. I know about soccer. But Monet loved to use color, apparently, or so I was told. <laughs> Not about that. It's about knowing your stuff. And if you know your stuff, you can rise, because people will will, will take you seriously. People, will, we we've gotten past the glass ceiling. We're not. We haven't completely broken it. But we, you know, people are trying, and people are cognizant, and we need to. 
And we will make further advances there, but the further advances will come as people come and they're prepared for jobs. I don't mean standing in front of a teleprompter. Anybody could stand in front of a teleprompter and read 10 seconds worth of copy. You know, if you know how to read, you can read a teleprompter. The key is to what you know is to be able to stand there when you've got, all right, we've got five minutes to fill before whatever, go. And John will tell you this happens all the time. It's like, okay, what am I going to say for five minutes? That comes from being prepared to be able to talk about the Yankees and the Red Sox or the Yankees and the Orioles or the Yankees and the Orioles or the Mets or whatever it is for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever it takes, because you have that kind of knowledge. You are that prepared. You are that good. You have studied your craft. You have perfected your craft. If you can do that, none of this other stuff matters. What matters is that you're the right person for the job because you are prepared, you know your stuff, and you can communicate it to the audience. When I started in 92, women in the clubhouse was kind of a big deal. You paid attention to it. You, you know, kind of talked about it. When I ended my career in 2005, it's not even an issue now. There are women in the clubhouse. Players have adjusted. It's not an issue. Uh, the one thing I will say to Flip's point, when I go to work every day, I pay attention to what Al Leiter says. I pay attention to what Paul O'Neill says. I pay attention to Meredith Morakovitz and what she says. Um, to me, it doesn't have anything to do with male or female. If you know what you're talking about, we're all on the same page. And I've been around some, some women in the business and some men in the business who don't know what they're talking about. And to their credit, they will come up to you and say, I'm on, on the right page here. Help me with this. But if you know your business, in the world we live in today, it does not even matter. We don't even bat an eye. And I have to give Meredith Morakovitz is on top of her game. She knows it. She doesn't need any help with anything. And she's just one of the crew uh, when we go to work every day. We don't even bat an eye when she's around. Very qualified. Thank you, gentlemen.